All right, YouTube, what's up? I want to talk to you today about what you need to get started bass fishing. You don't need a lot, but let's first think about what kind of fishing you're going to be doing. You're probably going to be walking the bank, maybe at a local pond, maybe at your local river. Typically, if you're a bank fisherman, um, you're not able to cover as much water as someone in a boat. So the philosophies of how you fish are going to be totally different. In a boat where you're moving with your trolling motor, you're going to be throwing that spinner bait. You're going to be throwing that little square bill crank bait or your swim bait all along until you find the fish. Well, it's pretty much the opposite in bank fishing. You're going to be in a couple different spots at the most. You might even only have one spot and you need to fish that as thoroughly as possible. So the best way to do that is with finesse tactics. Now, uh, I fish the San Marcos River, as you know, and it's gin clear water with lots of grass and current. Um, the fish are very picky over there because there's lots of, of tubers and just people swimming in the river pretty much year round. It, the, year, uh, the river is a fairly warm temperature year round because it's a spring fed river. Regardless of that, um, I find that finesse tactics work best. So what do you need to throw those finesse tactics if you're just getting started? You need a good spinning rod. Um, you don't have to go spend, you know, $200 on the nicest rod or anything like that. I found that you can get a decent combo for about 60 bucks at your local academy or uh, Dick's Sporting Goods, any store like that. So here we go. Now this is my rod. I wouldn't recommend maybe this specific one. I have some good ideas of what I would rather have for the money. But anyway, this is a H2O Express. It's a camo rod with a camo reel. Um, got it because it looked cool, to be honest. It's not the uh, it's not the best rod in the world, but it, hey, it's not the worst either. It works great for me, and it's all I got right now. So anyway, you can get this for about 60 60 80 bucks something like that um, I would recommend the H2O Express Ethos at Academy it's a light blue colored rod um, it's got a really quality blank it's it's a really sensitive rod I actually have one in a baitcaster and I love it um, as far as a reel goes um, I would say anything will do as long as it's got you know a, doesn't reverse at all it's got an anti-reverse bearing you don't want it reeling doing that reset anytime you do whatever uh, so make sure it's got a constant anti-reverse um, Shimano makes some of the best spinning reels anyhow this is a it's a seven foot medium action spinning rod and it works great I throw I throw my drop shot on it and it just it just plain works it does its job and that's all you need to do right okay so we got a rod Let's talk about what kind of line you need. I personally, I like braid on my spinning reels. I found that braid is an excellent option for spinning rods because it has little memory, it's super sensitive, it just works perfect, it comes off. It, I feel like braid was honestly made for spinning reels. Um, I use 15 pound Power Pro, uh, and also another good one is the, uh, what is it? It's uh, Suffix 832 super smooth super slick line I found that those are some of my favorites to use and then I like to tie a fluorocarbon leader on that and typically I go with about an 8 or a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader depending on the situation alright so let's talk rigging let's talk baits hooks and weights so what kind of baits do you need in my opinion you only need one this is the Z-Man Finesse Worm. Now, you may want a couple different colors. In my opinion, I like two colors. You go with something in a green, or you go with something in a black or a blue, something like that, something darker. Keep things simple, guys. That's the easiest way to catch more fish. Keep it simple. Okay, so moving on. This Finesse Worm is made out of Elastec, and it's the most durable stuff I've ever seen made soft plastic out of. Look at this. You can stretch this thing. I mean, a fish is not going to tear this up. It stays on the hook really well. You're not going to be having to change baits all day. 
Another great property of Elastech is that it floats. So that makes it an excellent candidate for drop shotting. When you're drop shotting, you want your worm to be kind of floating, looking like it's a like it's a fish or something moving around like this, you know? You don't want it being all droopy like this, do you? Anyway, that's another excellent reason. It also, since it floats, it does well on shaky heads. Your shaky head is bouncing around on the bottom, you want the tail up here. And then Texas rigs as well, if you're trying to stay a little more weedless. This stays on the hook really well. I also have found it's super soft, so it allows the, the hookup ratio to be up there. I mean, the hook comes through this really easy when you're getting into those fish. So, let's talk what kind of hooks I like to use. For drop shotting, I use this. It's a little one aught mosquito hook from Owner. And pretty much just use that. We'll talk about rigging, how to rig these in another video. I'm, right now we're just talking about what you need to buy. You need to buy for Texas rigs a little 2 watt off shank, offset shank worm hook like this. This little guy is what you want right here. Okay. Let's talk about different kinds of weights. Weights I like to use. Use small little bullet weights like this for your Texas rigs. This is this is tungsten, but lead works just fine. I've actually found that on the lighter weights, lead works just as good as tungsten. So you need that. I would get like an eighth ounce to start off with. If, if you only want to buy one weight, buy an eighth ounce lead bullet weight. Drop shotting. I use little drop shot weights. I use a couple different kinds, but for simplicity's sake, um, we'll just talk about this one. This is your drop shot weight. Now you'll notice this little thing on top that is for your line to go through that'll actually crimp on your line you don't have to tie it I've, you know, nothing to say about these they are what they are um, there's a couple different styles um, you can get these cylindrical ones this is what I use most of the time because I'm fishing around grass this will go through in and out of grass a lot easier than the little round ball one will now if you're not fishing around any grass if you're just fishing on a clay or or you got a rock bottom this will work just fine so that's it that's everything you need to start bass fishing just buy these things keep it simple guys and you will catch fish